welcome to Hooked on Utah. We got a great adventure for you, man. We are right down here in Sand Peak County. We've got the crew from SMS and a bunch of other people with us. We're gonna go out, rip up the snow, have a great time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's frosty cold adventure. All right, so we are at Fairview Canyon. One of the things I love about uh, Sam Peak County and Fairview Canyon, they've got all the turnoffs. Bathrooms are open for snowmobiling and they've got some of the best country Utah has to offer in terms of deep snow and great snowmobiling. So when you're thinking about your next outdoor snowmobiling adventure, right here in up Fairview Canyon, Sam Peak County, they've got it all. This is just an awesome place. So our day has begun in terms of snowmobiling. Now, Let's talk about uh, side hilling. So our first little spot up here, there was kind of a, there was a steeper section. I'm a novice snowmobiler. You guys are not. You guys hit it nice and hard, beautiful side hilling. What is the technique for the new snowmobiler? So there's a couple of, a couple of things. You gotta figure out where your balance point is on your snowmobile and how it reacts to your turn, to your steering. And you know, you gotta turn right to go left. You gotta counter steer on a side hill. You, you turn opposite the hill and kind of lean into it and you're able to maneuver with your throttle up to where, wherever you wanna go. It takes a little practice. It takes a day or two of really learning on a new snowmobile even uh, how to do it. But once you figure out where your balance point is and how to counter steer against the hill, you you can become pretty good and it's a little easier on the right side than it is on the left side and for some people vice versa but it just takes practice you just have to get out there and work at it okay so we've got a nice side hill right here yeah you i would like try to it? go up and demonstrate for us proper side hill technique you probably watch me roll i hope <laughs> All right, so you can see right now, he's got a lean going. He's really got the snowmobile on its side with the ski off the snow. And that's how he's able to just side hill that without having the snowmobile want to just turn and go downhill. And it takes some strength. That was the thing I noticed, man, it takes some leg strength and balance to get it to actually side hill like that. You've got to force that machine over. Pretty cool, now if you watch him again, he's starting out and he's side hilling, his weight is on that uphill side, getting that ski up and off, and the counter steering is the part that's the most difficult. Check it out, right up, over the top. That's awesome right there. Way cool, that is so cool. Hooked on Utah is proudly presented by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Mountain America Credit Union, supporting your home, your business, your life. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork, Utah, family owned since 1968. Tickaboo Lodge, base camp to your North Lake Pal adventures. Ride what the pros ride, Carl Malone Polaris in Heber City, Utah. Lifetime, bringing families together. Gary Yamamoto Bates, salty goodness. All right, 
right, I'm here with Brett Kobernick. Now, Brett, you're with the Forest Service, but you are an avalanche expert. So today we're up here, we've got some fresh snow. We're snowmobiling. Four people are gonna come in the back country. Let's talk about safety, some equipment, and what they need to know. Perfect, so we've got quite a bit of terrain along the Manti skyline. Uh, not all of it is avalanche terrain. Some of it you can be out in safely and have no worries all day long. Some of it is avalanche terrain. So that's the first thing. You gotta learn what avalanche terrain is. Basically, that's any slope that's 30 degrees in steepness or steeper. So if you're uh, on or below slopes of 30 degrees in steepness, then you're in avalanche terrain. If you're gonna be out in avalanche terrain, everybody needs to bring the proper equipment, the avalanche safety gear. And that includes an avalanche transceiver, or also, also known as avalanche beacon. What does this do? This sends a signal out. I turn this on and put it on my body in the morning. It sends a signal out all day long. If I'm caught in an avalanche, my partners that also are carrying these can change theirs over to receive, so then they're searching for my signal when I'm underneath the snow. Okay. The second piece of gear you need to have is this uh, collapsible avalanche probe. And what this does is you, uh, Assemble it, if someone's buried, you assemble this and use it to pinpoint their location. So now the signal is underneath the snow, it's coming out, you've gotten pretty close and you use this to pinpoint their location. The next piece of equipment you need to have is the avalanche uh, shovel, some sort of collapsible shovel and uh, obviously to dig your partners out with, uh, if they're buried in the avalanche. Okay, now you're wearing a different, you've got a backpack on and you've got an extra safety device with you. Yep. What is it? This is an airbag backpack. And basically the idea there is if you're caught in an avalanche, you pull this cord and it inflates an airbag, makes you more buoyant than the avalanche debris. Hopefully it will keep you on top. Um, again, th these three pieces of equipment are the most important and they're mandatory. This is a really nice piece of equipment also and we've seen a lot of close calls and a lot of saves with these avalanche airbags. So they, they are a very valuable piece of equipment. Most guys you'll see out here are carrying them these days. Okay, so for a new person, how do I know, you know, snow conditions? What's the best way to find out snow conditions so I know if I'm, you know, obviously steepness, this is more than 30 degrees over here, but snow quality that's gonna add to possibly the higher chance of avalanche. Sure, so uh, at the Utah Avalanche Center, we put out daily avalanche forecasts and we put one out specifically for the Manti skyline. And we're gonna tell you about snow, weather, and avalanche conditions. This information's updated every day before about seven o'clock in the morning and uh, uh, gives you something, some information prior to you getting out on the slope. So you know what to expect when you get out there. Is it a low danger and you can go play on these steep hills? Or is the danger high and you need to avoid this stuff? It's all there in the avalanche forecast. Again, it's uh, updated about seven o'clock each morning. Awesome. Hey, we appreciate what you do. Now remember, get into your local dealer or sportsman's warehouse, get geared up and check the forecast. Be safe before you head out in the back country because I'll tell you what, we're out here a long ways and it's hard to get to you if you end up in trouble. So we got a bit of a ditch here and we're trying to get up and over. So our first guy hit it, got sideways, flipped over. Then K-Dog, he went for it. We didn't get it on camera. He rolled the machine, got himself tangled up. We got him out. So now we're trying to get unstuck. This is the beauty of snowmobiling. And I'll tell you what, when you run in the deep snow, you hop and you puff like you can't believe. Unbelievable. But uh, this is what happens right here. This is the fun of it. So you gotta be prepared. We'll see what he does. He's gonna spark it up. We'll see if, we can, if he gets himself out. So nowadays, best way to get unstuck is to just do what Kate did and roll it over. Roll it out of his tracks. And now he's out. And he, now he'll try to side hill out of that. Because the machine, just tipping it over like that, it's not going to do anything to it. Doesn't hurt it. Doesn't hurt it. Now, here's my problem. Right here, 
uh, it would be challenging for me to not get sucked down into the into that hole. It's challenging for Cade too. Look at him thinking about it. Cade, don't go in the hole. So that technique, look at him side hill, and if he doesn't get stuck, and he's out. If he can make it through the ditch, he did. Piece of cake. Nice. Round two. tell you what that takes there's a technique to it and being such a beginner snowmobiler um, it's fun man I'm gassed out it takes a lot of energy to get the skis and lean these guys are so good at it but what a blast what a blast Okay, Brett, you're riding something very different. I mean, this is truly the hog. I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> Let's talk about it. I mean, this is, you built this. Yeah, the uh, it's known as a snow bike and they've been, uh, they've been getting more popular. There are kits that you can purchase and bolt on to uh, existing motorcycles. But this is something I built custom for my purposes here along the, the skyline. Uh, I started off with a 950cc V-twin KTM engine, and I've got a Polaris track, and a timber sled skid, and whatever other various parts I can scrounge up. Put it all together, and this is what I got. How long did it take you to build this? Oh, I've been working on it for over a year. You know, I go out and test it a little bit, and go back and make a few modifications, and break things, and go out and do it again, and learn kind of learn as i go how does it compare to a snowmobile in terms of riding balance i mean would you say anybody who's been riding motocross could jump on this and just rip and go yeah it, it only takes you a quick little little bit of time before you, you get the hang of it especially if you've ridden motorcycles before now what i like about the snow bikes is that i can put this thing literally anywhere i want to up in the mountains regardless whether the snow is soft or completely firm I can side hill this thing and put it through the tightest trees that I want to. That is my main reason why I like the snow bikes. Well, it is cool. So let's uh, let's have you fire this up, and we'll film you going on a little ride because it, this thing is so cool, and it's got such a deep throaty sound. The fact that he built this is incredible. I want one. I still haven't mastered the snowmobile, so maybe I should start there. Isn't that cool? Big old throaty 950. And he says he's putting turbos on it. So he's got a little more bang in it.
That is way cool. That's pretty dang cool. So if you want Brett's number and have him build you a machine, we'll put it up on the show so you can get a hold of him. He does, uh, he gives lessons and he also teaches a late night dance class, so. You'll, you'll be guaranteed to get broken down out in the back country. <laughs> but you'll have fun. Before you head out on one of these snowmobiling adventures right down here in San Pete County, up on the Skyline Drive, go to snowmobilingutah.org and get one of these Central Utah Skyline snowmobile maps. These are awesome. They've got all the maps, all the trails for snowmobiling up here on the Skyline Drive. And it's just a great resource for you if you want to come up and snowmobile. Make sure you get this map. They have, they've gone to great lengths to produce some of the best UTV and snowmobiling maps around. This is an awesome one. Snowmobilingutah.org, San Pete County, check it out. All right, I'm here with Kate Eliason from Moroni. Now, Kate, what kind of sled are you riding today? I'm riding a Polaris 850. What do you like about it? Uh, everything. Yeah? yeah? Power, speed, track? It's, they just come out with the, it's a new motor they just come out with this year and they're supposed to be pretty incredible, so. Well, so far I've seen you do some pretty fun stuff. You got stuck, you've done some cool stuff, up some steep mountains through the trees. You've got total control of your sled, which is cool. Lots of practice. Yeah? What, uh, what, would you, uh, what would you tell the beginner in terms of maybe one trick they can do that will help them be a better snowmobiler? Steer left to go right. Steer left to go right. So leaning and then getting that counter steer to then get it to turn. Yep. That's what I've been struggling with as a new snowmobiler. It's tough. It's a hard thing to learn, but once you catch on to it, it's, it makes the world a, bit, a total difference. But... Awesome. Awesome. Well, you uh, so far you've been the fun guy. You've been wrecking and rolling over and doing some cool stuff, so uh, keep it up. All right, this is Connor Eliason. Now he is Cade's younger brother, brother, but what I've seen is he's giving him a run for his money in terms of being the snowmobile king, right? The king yeah. of the mountain? Getting there. Yeah? What are you riding today? I'm um, Pro RMK 2016 155 2.6 lug. Boom! Paka, paka, paka. And the kid can ride. What do you like about uh, this sled? Um, it's light, and I'm not the biggest guy on the mountain, so gotta have the lightest sled to throw it around. And you throw it around well. We've seen you do some really fun stuff today. Yeah. What's the power like on this? Um, it's got a SLP stage two, so it's pretty decent. Awesome. Now your brother gave us a tip on turn left to go right, opposite direction. What's your snowmobile tip for the new guy? Um, that's pretty much it. And that's it. Look ahead. Don't look, look ahead, yeah. Don't what look. happened to you this morning? I looked at the tree and I went to the tree. Awesome. 